infographics are a great source of information for students. Um, and they tend to be an opportunity for knowledge or for remembering something, um, a mnemonic. Um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? That's a mnemonic that everybody in the world knows. Um, but if I have a poster, and I've never heard this before, I have a poster up on the wall that says, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and it goes through what the acronym means. And every day that I'm in this class, I know that the poster is right here next to me. On the day of the test, on the days of exams, like the STAR test, like all, you know, we take all kinds of tests. Um, on those days, you know, we take down all the instructional material, anything that has any kind of um, information or anything that I could use to help myself on the test. We have to take all of that down. So what would happen is you're going to remember that that poster is there and you're going to um, you're going to remember that that poster is there and I'm going to look over there and I might not see the poster because the teacher took it down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember, okay, that poster is there. This is what it looked like. This is the information that it had. This is how, okay, now I remember. And so it creates an anchor in your mind of, I've seen this so many times. I'll give you another example. Um, when you guys were freshmen, I had the seniors that graduated last year. Um, and that was my first year teaching chemistry after having been away for 15 years. Um, and I, well, for 10 years. So I was teaching um, atomic number. I was teaching atomic number, atomic mass. Um, and for whatever reason, I was switching how things were supposed to be. So I got through all of my class periods and then I get to eighth period and I look over and on the wall, I had put up a poster of how to find atomic number. And I looked at the poster and I'm like, oh my God, I've been explaining it wrong all day. Um, so the next day I had the kids tear out their sheet from their notebooks. Um, we went ahead and started over. I was like, look, I messed up. I made a mistake. We're going to fix this. Um, but that anchor chart even helped me, right? Because I had gone through the whole day super confident that I knew what I was doing um, and clearly I did not. So anchor charts are really beneficial. They're really important. What we're going to do right now is we're going to look at some anchor charts. Um, and, and I want you to see some examples because anchor charts can really be what it is that you want them to be. Um, and so I want you to get a different sense of what an anchor chart can be, okay? So if we look at this one, this is an anchor chart for capitalization. A basic grammar rule, uh, names of people and pets, names of places, days of the week, anything that needs to be capitalized. Excuse me. Um, this obviously was made ahead of time. Right, the teacher was not creating this as they were going along. Uh, cubes, a problem solving strategy, right? So this is a strategy that they use to solve word problems. Um, these are some different anchor charts, story elements, uh, parts of a 3D shape, uh, reading to yourself, metacognition. This is an author's purpose. So it says, remember pi, and the teacher drew pies to represent each of the different letters of the mnemonic, okay? Elements of poetry. And so here you see a little bit of an image, a lot of color. And you'll see that in your anchor charts, they tend to be colorful, they tend to have big letters, because you don't want an anchor chart that you have to be two inches away from to be able to see. You want an anchor chart that you can see from across the room because you're going to have students that are across the room that are not near your anchor charts. Um, you have some professionally made anchor charts, like these are ones that you can buy and then cut out and they're already made for you. Um, this is an anchor chart talking about nonfiction text features. Um, so this is 
an example of how to create, there's an anchor chart showing you how to create your anchor chart. Um, and so there's all kinds of anchor charts that you can use in a classroom to create a visual that your students can use to remind themselves of a skill that you have taught them. An anchor chart does not take the place, does not take the place of the teacher teaching the skill. You as the educator still have to say, hey, here's PEMDAS. Here's what it means. Here's how we use it. Here's how to use it if you're in this situation. Here's how to use it with this scenario. Here's, there's all of these different things for PEMDAS. Here it is, here's everything. You, the teacher, still have to do that part. But then after I'm done with PEMDAS, now my poster for PEMDAS can go up. And now if Vanessa's sitting in the corner and she's like, okay, the teacher said, uh, please excuse my DEAR. Okay, DEAR stands for uh, don't add, subtract. No, okay, that doesn't sound right. Okay, what does the D stand for? Uh, the D stands for, um, let's see, uh, well, I don't remember, right? And so Vanessa's looking around the room. She's like, okay, the teacher had a chart. She showed us the chart. Oh, okay, there it is. Dear D divide. Okay, and I know what to do now, okay? They become little memory tips. They become little ways that your students can access that memory. So your challenge this week your thing to do this week is you all are going to create an anchor chart for your content area. Um, I know in music, I remember when I was uh, in orchestra, there was a F-A-C-E, face, for the different um, strings on the violin. Um, there was there was there were all kinds of different acronyms that you could use. You could those, do those to do an anchor chart, um, maybe a timeline anchor chart. Uh, maybe there's a mnemonic for a part of history. Maybe there's a mnemonic for um, English that you like, a wubus, right? Everybody knows a wubus. I know a wubus. I don't know what it stands for, but I've heard the acronym a wubus. So you're going to want to create an anchor chart for something that relates to the content for your classroom, okay? And you want to create that anchor chart. I'm going to give you the dimensions. I'm going to put them in the chat. The anchor chart has to be tabloid paper size. And so a tabloid paper size is 11 by 17. Okay, that's the size of the paper that you're going to use. Now, two options. You can use actual paper. I don't have a problem with that. Or you can use a Google slide. So I'm going to show you how you would do this on a Google slide. So in your Google Drive, you're going to go to New Slides. And then under File, Page Setup. And you're going to do a custom. 11 by 17. Make sure it's on inches and then apply. So what you have now is, oh, that's not what I wanted. What you have now is a sheet, a quote unquote sheet of paper that's 11 by 17. Now, an anchor chart, remember we talked about, it should be colorful, you should have big enough letters. The, the impulse that you're, that you're gonna have is I have, all of this space, let me fill it in with teeny tiny information. You don't want to have to zoom in to see what's written, okay? So if I'm gonna put text in here and uh, I'm gonna put pies, that's a normal 14 size font, font, excuse me, but I can't see it. So I'm gonna wanna increase that so that maybe, this is big enough, okay? Maybe this is big enough. And now I've got my title for whatever it is that I'm trying to share. Now remember, it can be an acronym, it can be a skill, it can be um, a procedure. 
Maybe the procedure is how to put your instrument away at the end of the day. Maybe the procedure is how do we clean the room at the end of the day? Um, how do we sanitize our desk space after we're done using it before we come to the next class? Um, whatever it is that you're trying to teach, you are going to create an anchor chart that you can use to reinforce that skill. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'll create an assignment in Google Classroom that you all can access um, so that you can go ahead and have that template already made. Um, and then this will be due on Friday. So I want you to start thinking. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half. I want you to start thinking about what could you do your anchor chart on? What topic would you do your anchor chart on? I'm going to give you a minute and a half, and then I want you all to share. Okay, one more minute. Okay, 20 more seconds. All right, that is time. So who would like to talk about what anchor chart they want to make? Who would like to voluntarily tell me before you are voluntold? I think I would do like require the notes. Okay. Um, um, how would you make that visually appealing? Like, what do you think? Um, I would kind of draw like a story out, including like the notes. Very cool. I like that. That's a good idea. Um, anybody else want to share? Thank you, Susan. All right, Angela, what do you think you would do as an anchor chart for your class? All right, Betsy, what do you think, Betsy? I'm not sure what specific topic. Okay, so definitely something for math. Very cool. Yes. So think about what grade level you're wanting to teach, Angela, and then um, maybe something that they struggle with, something that, you know, you feel like you constantly would have to remind them. Um, numerator, denominator is a big one. Um, PEMDAS is a big one. Um, you know, inside and outside parentheses, like kind of going with the order of operations, those are all big um Activities in, in lower grades, subtraction and regrouping are ones that students really, really struggle with. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Angela. Just So just think about that. Betsy? All right, I'm just going to take it out, but I don't feel like typing it out in All right. Um, so I want to be an English teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, maybe it's a common word that are, that are confused, like the there's. And the it and stuff. That's a really good one. And I've seen some really cute infographics on that. Like um, they are 
has like the Y turned into a person because it has to do with people versus there, like a place has like an arrow. So yeah, that's a really cute one and a very important one. You would be doing a public service, ma'am, because I've seen a lot of really ratchet Facebook posts recently with some terrible grammar. So Ms. Brown, I'm a, I'm a grammar police. If somebody, we have a bunch of group chats for church stuff. If somebody does like uses the wrong word, I literally fix it. If there's anything. Yeah, it's you're doing the Lord's work, Betsy. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Matthew, what about you? Effects of the Industrial Revolution, I guess. Ooh, I like that. That's a cool idea because you could definitely integrate like the factory and the clouds and then do, you know, some kind of cool graphic that way. So very cool. Thank you, Matthew. What about you, Luis? I would uh, do the lengths and spaces on staffs between treble and, and yeah. base. The phase that every cow eats grass. Yes. Every great big dog falls asleep. Every boy deserves football. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. So you've got some ideas. I want you to run with that. On Wednesday, I would like to see a preliminary. This is what I'm thinking. This is what it's going to look like. So I can give you some feedback. Um, so on Wednesday, be prepared that I'm going to shift over to you guys and you guys will be presenting what you have so far. Um, the other thing is, please make sure that you've taken your star renaissance. Um, I need to check today to make sure that those are done. So I will be doing that. Um, I am back on campus today, um, and we will be sending out a form, a survey, asking first period students uh, about coming back. So uh, be prepared for that. I'll put it in Google Classroom under the announcements so that you all can access that. Um, and if there's nothing else, guys, then you all are free to go. Fundraiser, miss. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back. I talked to Debbie today, asking her about it, and uh, she said that she's hoping to 